and welcome guys to my solo playthrough of Wingspan, a competitive engine building bird collecting game for 1-5 to five players from Stone Meyer Games. Now I brought this game because it was quite high rated and I was really intrigued by it. I mean, I'm not really a massive fan of birds per se or bird collecting or bird watching, but after seeing the reviews and playthroughs and how fun this game can be and competitive, I really decided to buy it for myself and I found it to be a really engaging, fun game, lots of options, replayability, plenty of cards, interaction between players. And we're going to do a sort of playthrough now, so I'm going to explain briefly what I've got set up here so you can see for yourself. So, first of all, we have down here our player boards. Each player gets their own board. Now, the board's really handy because it tells you basically what you can do on your actions. For instance, it tells you here that you can, each turn, you can play a bird, you can gain food from the bird feeder, you can lay eggs on birds and draw bird cards. Now when you draw cards, you have a draw from the supply or this set of three ready up cards at the side here. These basically act as cards that go straight from there so you can see them. So you either take a chance from there or you pick ones that you want from there. And this will get refreshed throughout the game. You also start off with eight player cubes. You would get five resource tokens. You see down here, we have one of each. There's like a little worm, a bird, a uh, fish, cherries, wheat, and a rodent. These represent resources to pay for the birds, and they indicate what kind of food the bird eats. So if a bird eats stuff like wheat or worms, that's what you have to pay for that bird. We have five of these. We also get to draw five cards, which we'll just do that now, right now. So one, two, three, four, five. So we have five really nice illustrated cards here. We have a California quail, a barred owl, a Cassin's finch, a bobolink, and a Carolina chickadee. So, what you do is after you draw your first five cards, you then have to keep whatever cards you keep, you must discard resources. So, if I want to keep all five cards, I have to discard all five resources. If I want to keep two cards, I discard three resources. So, what you really want to do is you want to see what kind of resources you need. So, if you open the corner of the cards here, I'll explain briefly. So up here, these symbols tell me where the bird will be placed when it's played. The green birds go along here, the yellow symbol here goes along here, and the blue symbol, which is not there, goes down here. They indicate where the bird likes to lay its nest, so it can be in the trees, it can be in the fields, it can be on the water area. The symbol below indicates the resource type needed to pay for the bird cost. So for instance, this one here tells me I need to pay one of the rodent tokens to play the barred owl. This one here tells me I need one wheat and one cherry to pay for the Cassian's finch. And this one here indicates I can use either a green worm or either a wheat to pay for the Carolina chickadee. So I think I'm going to keep the barred owl. I'm going to keep the chickadee. I'm just going to discard three resources. So we definitely need a, we're going to keep a green for the chickadee, we'll keep a rodent for the barred owl. These two, we'll take the, the worm token, the rodent token, and we'll also keep one of the, let's see, we'll keep a wheat token and discard these two. So for each bird card you keep, you just discard a resource. This way keeps the game more balanced, keeps you from starting playing too many cards at once. It keeps the game more balanced for all players. So we'll keep those cards, that's our, that's our hand of cards. The next step is to take two bonus cards, these are these green back cards here, flip them over for each player, and pick one. And what these cards are, at the end of the game, you'll get bonus points depending on what you have. So for instance, this one here, um, the Uologist. So at the end of the game, if I have any birds that have at least one egg token laid on them, if I have seven to eight birds, I get three extra points. If I have nine plus birds, I get six points. And what they do is, at the end of the game, you'll get more points based on what you have for the category. So I'm going to keep the Historian versus after a person. I feel like I've got a better chance of getting the uh, Uologist one and get more eggs and that'll go for my end game goals. That's my bonus card down here. Keep to the side. You probably won't need it right away but we're at the end of the game. So, so next up we have the point scoring system. How this works, there are eight double sided tokens here that you get from the supply. You flip them over and place one randomly on each round. And these indicate the end of round goals you want to aim for. So. You haven't got to do this, but whoever does this gets the most points. Now, when playing solo, use the competitive side, so first, second, third, and fourth place. The other side is the more balanced side, where you get points based on how many you have in total, rather than being more competitive. 
So for instance, in round one, this tells me I need to get the total number of birds. So the most number of bird cards out on their player mat will achieve more points. The next round here tells me that I need so many types of birds with this type set of nest symbol with eggs on them to get so many points. This one here tells me I need so many eggs and so many nests in total, the higher number wins the round. And the last round tells me I need so many birds in my middle yellow section to get the most points. We also have over here, I mean, I'm not using the bird feeder because it's a bit of a setup. It's, it's more of like a fancy prop, much like the tree Neverdal. It's nice to have, but I just use this because it's simple and easier. Start of the game, you'll roll these. These are the bird feeder uh, resource tokens. When you want to gain resources, you take a token. So if I wanted one of the resources from here, I wanted a worm token. I take this, move it from the supply, and I take one of the worm tokens for myself. You can only take what's left face up in the bird feeder area. If there's one token left or none, and you need to take some, you may really just re-roll the dice and do it again. But bear in mind, always look out for this because you can't get resources that aren't already there. So that's that. Okay, that's our, that's our setup. I'm gonna go over the other setup now for the Ultima, to set the solo AI control player. So first of all, we have the deck of solo cards here. These are cards that tell certain actions that the solo player is gonna take on their turn. Every turn, we're gonna flip one over and match it next to the round card here. And whatever round it's on will be the action it's taken. So this tells me if I'm on round one, the AI player will gain one egg and place one of his cubes on the uh, scoreboard chart, increasing his score. If I drew this card and it was, let's say, round three, instead, he would gain three eggs, but remove one of his tokens, one of his um, color cubes from the scoreboard. I'll pull that down there. We also give the AI player one bonus card because this relates to his end of game scoring and certain actions will be related to cards that relate to your um, bonus cards. So if I it said something that drew a card that matched his bonus card, it would be birds that eat the fish icon there. We have his player cubes at the side here. We also have his extra bonus end of round goal scoring cards. Now what this does is because he doesn't have his own player board, he won't have birds face down or stuff like that, and it cards in his hand or resources in his hand, we have this to tell him how many points he has in the round. So you see here we have round one, round two, round three and four. So what it says at the end of the round, so we can see here, round one is total number of birds. Now in round one, he's gonna get a base score of two total birds. If he has any extra cubes on here, that also increases his score. Um, for instance, if we go to round four, his total number of bird cards will indicate 11. So basically, they scale up. And that's the sort of challenge to match his score of yours. Uh, we also have the reference cards here for the solo player, just to tell me, help me out what, what his does, just to tell me what certain cards do. So what the, the icons on the cards mean, we're represented here. And next up, we're going to start playing. So first of all, what do you do in Wingspan? How do you play Wingspan? So the idea of Wingspan is to manage your cards in your hand and your resources, play birds from your hand, into your uh, scorecard down here, your player board, activate certain birds' abilities, get more resources, get more eggs, build up your engine, so to speak, and get more and more stronger. As, as, as the rounds go on, you get more and more cards out, you can play more things, you trigger more abilities, you have more combos and synergies of the cards. And then the game finishes, end of the fourth round, you add up all your points, and whoever has the most points wins. So normally, in um, Wingspan multiplayer, each player has one action and goes around the board. So we're going to go first. So the best way to play a game is just to show you how it works. So we're going to go first in Wingspan. So I know that to get the most points in Wingspan, I'm going to need the most total number of birds. Now I know here that he's going to have at least two, so I need to get more than two birds. So first of all, I might play a bird. Now if we just examine the bird card, so I already discussed the um, icons up here, the cost and the uh, nest location. The, this icon here indicates the points. So at the end of the game, we add these to our score and that'll increase more points. Obviously, the higher this is, the more points we get. This little symbol down here, and I'll show you here as well, indicates the nest type. Different types of nests. These relate to the bonus cards up here. As you can see here, the more eggs in those type of nests, there's more points. If a bird has a star icon like this, this can mean any nest, so it can apply to all the bonuses we need. 
Next down here, these little egg symbols, these indicate the maximum number of eggs can be placed on a card. Placing eggs on a card is useful for so many reasons. One, you get more points in the game. Two, when you want to play more cards later on, it'll cost you eggs, so you need eggs to pay for the cost of certain cards. And three, it also helps you with certain end game goals. Next, we have the wingspan of the birds. This is mostly used for certain bonus cards. Uh, we also have a little ability in a brown box down here. And it says here, when activated. This one here tells you, when activated, gain one wheat token from a supply and cash it on this card. When you activate abilities, you do this by playing cards on your board. And then when you do the icon down here, so if, one, so if I wanted to gain resources, I put a, res a cube down here, gain the resources, and activate these abilities. What this does is, the more cards you have down on the board, the stronger the abilities of the board are. So, for instance, down here, just playing this will let me draw one card from the supply or from the bird feed, the uh, settle down here. If I had some birds down here on the way, I place a cube, I could draw two or even three cards, the more birds I have. So the more birds you play, the stronger your board is going to be. So let's look at the symbols down here. It's pretty good because it does tell you what things do. It tells you here, gain food from the, gain food from the bird feeder, lay eggs on birds, draw bird cards, and activate any brown powers in this row. So first of all, let's just play a bird. So to play a bird, take our cube, just place it here for now to show we're going to use it. And we are going to play, let's see, we need just total birds, it doesn't really matter really. So we're going to play the Carolina Chickadee. I can only play it in the green zone, so I'm going to put it up here. That's my turn done. Put the cube, I put the cube down there on the board, indicates how many I've got. So we have eight cubes, we have basically eight actions. At the end of the round, whoever has the most uh, end of goal scores will place one of their cubes on here, indicates what place they're on. So essentially you lose cubes each turn, you have less actions. But towards the end of the game, you have more things to do, more synergies, so it doesn't really matter really, it kind of balances out. So that's our turn over. Sorry, we play a resource for that. That's there. Nothing happens right away. We just played the bird. Some cards do say when played, as, as since the Atlantic Puffin here says when played, draw two new bonus cards and keep one. But currently, this is nothing. But all we're trying to do is increase our resource options and also add to our total bird count. So there is quite a lot of things you can do when expand. There's a lot of options, a lot of game strategies you can go for. You can try get more resources out, go for more eggs, go for bonus cards, go for draw more cards. It's very different. So now on Autumn's turn, we get the top card of this Autumn deck, flip it over, and place it down here on the card to indicate what we need to do. So this tells me here, it gains one egg, places one cube on the total uh, bird icon of the scoreboard. What this means is, rather than having a total cost of three, two birds, he now has three birds in total. So he's actually got three birds, so I'm actually quite behind already in this game mode. Also gains one egg, and I'm using dice for the eggs because a lot of times you'll get a lot of egg tokens, and there'll be eggs everywhere. So use a dice, it's easy to track the, the eggs he actually has. So that's his turn over. Okay, now it's our turn. Now you see, I cannot play the barred owl next. I require one egg. So it's always, all it does is cost the resources to pay one there. If you want to pay, the more birds you pay in a row, the more it's going to cost eggs. So having eggs is quite handy. So it tells me here I do need more eggs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my turn to gain some eggs on this card. Which is actually pretty good because not only does it add some more points towards the end of the game, let me pay for the card next turn, but I can see here already, round two, I need birds with that nest with eggs on them. And that has that nest, so I know next round I would have got an advantage on that round. So I'm going to place my cube here and gain two eggs from the supply. When you gain eggs, place them on any bird you want. But don't forget, you can only place the maximum of eggs per bird. Any others that you can't play will be lost. So I put two on the Carolina Chickadee and move my cube there to show that I've played one this turn. Now time for Autumn's turn. Flip a card over. So, right, this tells me here. So the dice symbol here tells me to take a bird from the bird feeder, feeder and this tells me the order to take it in. So first of all, I need to look for a rodent dice and remove it from the uh, bird feeder. There's one there, so I'm fine. If there was no rodent dice to the bird feeder, I move along and take the fish. If there's no fish icons, the cherry, and so forth. So this has gone, reducing my chances of getting that resource for myself. And also it says here to activate all pink powers. Now, what pink powers are, if I can just find one. Pink powers are played sort of in between turns, like a sort of triggered response. This tells me once between turns, when another player plays a bird in a water nest area, gain one fish from supply. Obviously, 
in a single player game like this, we can't trigger these kind of abilities. So these cards let us do this and sort of help us out a little bit. So, but for now we can't, we have any ping powers out, so we can't do that anyway. So that's the end of the round for him. So now I can play the Bard Owl. So I pay one Ronin token, pay one egg from my birds, and place the Bard Owl down here. That's my turn over. Put the cube there and move it down. The cubes are pretty handy because it tells you if you've done your turn and how many actions you have left on your turn as well. So Autumn's going now, so flip it over. Right, so this tells me, first of all, he gets a cube. Discard all birds from the bird tray, which can mess up your game if you try and go for certain birds that you see that you like. And Autumn draws one, keeps it face down. Face down cards for him add points to the end of the game. As always, as soon as the uh, bird feeder is empty, just put some more in there. So the bird tray, not the bird feeder. So we have new bird, birds in the bird tray. So now it's time for my go. So I've got no cards in my hand. I could do a drawing cards really. So cost wise, the bald eagle is very expensive. It requires two fish icons, one rodent icon. This as well, I need a worm and a fish. Probably best going for the Carolian Warbler because it's quite cheap and I only need one worm token. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to gain some resources. Luckily, I've got two cards already here, so I can gain two resources. Put us here. So first of all, I'll gain two resources. I'm going to use this to gain one worm token. And then I'm going to gain a fish token too, while I'm there. Add some resources to myself. And also, let's activate the bird powers. So go along first. So this says, when activated, look at a card from the deck. If it is 75 centimeters or less, as in the wingspan, tuck it behind this card, if not discard it. So let's look at the top card of one of these. It is less than 75, so I took it behind this card. Now, cards behind other cards do nothing other than add points in the game, so it is pretty handy to have. There we go. This one also says to gain one wheat from supply and cash it on this card. This is what I do. And this also adds points in the game. There we go. So all in all, a pretty good turn. Now it's time for Autumn's go. So what's he gonna do this time? He gains an egg, that's it, nothing else. So pretty easy for him this turn. Next up, I'm gonna kinda of wanna draw some cards. Now, I'm gonna go for the Caribbean Warbler, because it's pretty, uh, Caribbean Warbler, sorry. It's pretty cheap, I can afford it. So I'm gonna place one down here and draw a card. That's in my hand now. And also replace the card there. Ooh, nice, pretty uh, hummingbird. Move that along. Autumn's turn now, so this indicates that he take all birds that match his bonus card. He keeps the highest point value face up as cards any others. So any bird that eats the fish icon, so that's this one, that's also this one, and it's also this one because this symbol here indicates any icon, so that's all them. The highest point one, he keeps uh, face down, or face up, so that's the bald eagle, he's got quite a lot of points there for himself, so he has that one down there. Discard the rest and replace these. That was a pretty a pretty tough turn, really. You see how it kind of throws me off a little bit as well because what resources I was going for aren't in, in there anymore. A nice owl there, a meadow week and a wren. Also, the cards here do have a nice little uh, constant location and little facts about the birds too, which is pretty nice. I do like that touch. Plus, the cards this game do kind of feel quite nice too. Plus, all the cards in here feel nice too. They feel quite like the material is really nice and the cards shuffle nicely as well. So I'm going to play the Carillion Warbler again in the green zone. Also requires an egg, fortunately, but I want the cards. So we're going to use our token here, place it there, pay an egg. Um, costs a green worm and a yellow wheat token and place it down here. When played, draw two new bonus cards and keep one. That's pretty good for us. So we're going to draw two cards. So birds after a person or birds that eat the wheat symbol. I think that one's going to be better for us, I think. So we're going to keep that one. Let's get more points in the game and help us win. That's our turn over. So time for Autumn's turn. So he has, he gains an egg. So we add an extra egg to him and also take off one of his cubes from there. So now the score is even, which is pretty good for us. Uh, then we have our turn now, so can't really play much. I could do, I've probably got two actions left, but I need eggs to play them. So, what I'm probably best doing is maybe drawing some cards. 
So there's a lot of options here I can do. I might drain resources, I could draw cards. So I need to so I need to really look at the next game goals. So I can't really play much this turn. I could play the um it's up to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gain some resources, take a risk. So there's only one resource toe cube left in this. So that means I can take new resources. So I'm definitely gonna need a weak token from here. I think I'm gonna get a see that's gonna try tricky. We'll take another weak token. Not the best draw, but oh well. Also, don't forget to get our abilities. So, look at the top card of the deck. If it's sent five or less, it is. Another card behind there. Extra points for us. That's always good. And gain one from the supply. There isn't one from the supply, unfortunately. So, that's that for that one done. Uh, Ultimate turn now. So, it's got all these three cards. That really throws me off. He gets one face down, and we replenish the supply. So, one, two, and three. Some nice cheap birds there, that's pretty good. And our last turn, so we need, we should be okay for this round. We can't play any more birds, we haven't got any birds in our hand. So we should go for the next round goals. Next round goal is egg birds with those eggs in the nest. Now there's none there in the supply. So I could do, I'm gonna just do a blind card draw. I'm gonna just put one down here and draw a card blindly. Not where I needed, never mind. Uh, and that's his last turn now as well, so, okay from the supply, um, go along, and the next one is the, okay, so that's the, that's latest, oh, that's what, that one gone. Okay, that's the end of the round. So, end of the round, let's just check our scores. So, Autumn has one, two, three birds. I have one, two, three birds. So that means the first place is tied. So both tied for first, that means we get to add these two together, divide by the players, run them down. So five, when I down, that's two points each. So I'll just put one cube, put it in the middle there, so remember to put it there, and one there, because no one won that round. Okay, we take all these back over here. You see now I've only got seven cubes left. These get discarded and replenished with new cards, unfortunately. You go through this deck quite fast. There we go. And now for the next round. So I need birds of that type of nest with eggs in them. I've only got one. I've got two birds that kind of nest. And I've got one with a star icon in the um, bird tray. So I can really go for drawing that card and put eggs in the nest. Now, so he is going to have, what's his score for this? He only gets one for that so so far, it's not too bad I suppose. We'll also reshuffle his cards and flip his round scoring goal card over. There we go, shuffle the cards, there we go. So I do, I'm gonna draw this card here and then put eggs on my birds. So first of all, I'm gonna draw a card. We go straight for this Hermit Thrush, put on there and replenish to the supply. Okay, no birds of that symbol, but never mind. We can still win. Just, you don't have to go for the end game goals. It's just sort of it's to aim towards to get most points, but it doesn't mean you're going to lose. Don't worry about that. So, Ultimus turn, flip it over. So, after round two, his card's removed. So, we got a cube on there already, so he gets a bit of advantage. And he gets to discard all these three cards again. One face down and replenish. Ultimate in this game does like to change the bird tray a lot. So there, there, and there. Okay, we've got one of the birds we need. Another bit of a star icon. We can go for that this turn. So we're gonna. So this has when play draw two cards, so we can go for that one, I think. So we're gonna draw the Carolina Wren. That's our turn over, and go for that next turn. That's our that's our that's our game plan. This goes over. So we have resource icons removed, which will be the fish one first. And a cube removed. That's not too bad. Let's get some birds down here in these areas. So we're going to play the chestnutted colored long spur. We just need a green resource symbol if we can. So we're going to place this here. We're going to reshuffle, sorry, reshuffle, re roll these dice and hopefully gain a green symbol. Yep, yeah, that's good. So we're going to get two greens. So one. And two. 
So yes, trigger ability, so top color of this, percent five or less, it is. That's more points for us, the owl's really doing the work. And gain one of those some supply. Not on supply, never mind. That's how I go over. So Ultima's turn now. Uh, round two so is four points at the end of the round. Back to our turn. So we are gonna play the chestnut collared long spear. So we're playing a card. Don't forget, there's no X symbols there because there's no cards already in that, that section. So it just costs the resources. So it costs one, two, and one of those. When played, draw two new bonus cards and keep one. This is gonna be good. One, two. Birds that have to eat any symbol or birds in after a person. I'm gonna have the birds that eat any symbol there, just for extra points. That's round one, that's gone. Uh, round two is discard all three of these. It keeps one face down. Again, a nice turkey vulture. Okay, so we need to lay some eggs down in our cards. So we've got one, two, nest. We're gonna put eggs in our cards now. We're gonna put this here and lay two eggs on our nests. There we go. Autumn's turn. Gains resources, uh, be the rodents. And activate all pink powers. I don't have any, so never mind. Our draw. Let's draw up. I've only got one action left after this, so be careful here. I do have more birds with that nest type, so we're going to go for the resources and hopefully play the Hermit Thrush next turn. So we're going to put this here again, shuffle up the resource cubes, like so. Ooh, got two cherries. That's what I need. I'll take two cherries. Put that there. I also get to look at top card and put it underneath this one if I, if I can. Only just 71. That'll do. Gained one from supply. Cash as bird. More points for me. There we go. And that's there. We've got one turn left after this one. His turn now. Round two. Any cards that match the bonus card? That is these two here. Keeps the highest put one face up. That's just that one. Discard that. Place these. And that. Oh, a nice owl. And we've got one thing left to do in our turn. And I think he bushed it. Draw that. Draw the bushed it. There we go. For the next round. Just playing ahead here. Just playing ahead. So, Ultimate's turn now. Round two. He gains two eggs now. With the dice. And also he gains one cube on there, which might be bad for us actually. So end of the round. So birds with eggs in the nest. Uh, he has one, two, three. I only have one, two. So unfortunately he wins this round. He gets first place. I get second place. Okay, on to the next round. So these all come back. Um, my cubes to refresh. Round three now. Can't really plan much when he keeps doing this and the, the bird feet the, the dice tree. That is there. A big owl, a heron, and a woodpecker. So next round, so I want eggs in those nests. Total number of eggs in those nests. I've got one there and I've got none there, but I've got a star icon bird here. Plenty of space for eggs in its nest. I'm gonna go for that this turn. So first of all to play this I need resources. I need the wheat resource. So we're just going to go for the resources, so there. Oh, there's a week there, we're okay. And we'll take the fish icon too, just in case. So we get a fish icon and a wheat icon. So he's going to have total number of that and eggs. It's going to be five, a base stat of five. So he's got, he's got quite a lot already. So it gets stronger and stronger each turn. So round three now. So Ultima's go is... Um, take a card that matches the uh, bonus icon, which is this one here, face up, replenish, and he also gets a cube on there, so he's got six already, so it's quite a high score. Okay, my go. Sorry, I forgot to do that last turn, I should have done that last turn. Didn't matter anyway. Discard it, it's too big, it's a big hawk. Okay, so that's my go now, so I'm going to play the bush tit. Now this can go anywhere. I could put it there. It's going to cost me an egg, but then next turn I can put three eggs down and do more eggs, so that works. I could put it there and go for more card draw, but I think the egg's going to be better. Plus, my last goal is birds in this zone as well, so it's going to help me out there. So we're definitely going to go for that. So we're going to 
put us down here, it costs a wheat and a worm token and an egg. There we go. Uh, next thing we're going to just get loads of eggs out. Hopefully we can win this round, we'll win one round. So Autumn's turn now, so he has discard all these three. Oh. Like I say, you go for this deck quite a lot. He keeps one face down. Over there. And a cube gone. Yes, that's what we want. Okay, our turn. So, I mean, I could go for playing the Hermit Thrush. But I think I'll get lots of eggs off that as well. So, and that's in the green zone, so I need to pay eggs to play, so I can't. So we're gonna go for the eggs. So we're gonna just put this here, gain three eggs. We're gonna put two on the Carulean Warbler. Am I saying that right? And one on the Bush Tit. And also his ability is, tuck a card beneath this bird. If you do, also lay one egg on this bird. So, oh, from your hand. Okay, so from my hand. You know what, we'll get rid of the Carulean Wren, because we don't need that. But also, I get an extra egg, which will help out in the end game score. So as you see, the more, more you play, the more synergies you get, the more you know, you, your engine builds up better, and it's a lot stronger. So, his turn now, that's a round two card, that should have been gone. Uh, round three, um, these should have been shuffled, sorry. Take from the supply, Any powers, I don't have any. Okay, my turn. You know what? We'll just go for the end game score. We'll get lots of eggs. So do this again. So one, two. I could put three on there for maximum, but I'm going to put one over here because I'm going to do the ability. I'm going to place this card, yep, under here, and also lay an egg on this card, like so. Now I've got plenty of eggs for the end of game score. Got three actions left. His turn now. Round three. Again, discard all these cards. You get to face down one. Replenish. Some pretty birds there. Kingfisher, Swallow, and a Flycatcher. Okay, so what can I do here? I could draw the Flycatcher, the Kingfisher. Play it next turn and hopefully have one last action put eggs on it. So we're going to do that. We're going to put that there to draw the kingfisher because it only requires one fish symbol and one of any. We'll place that there. There we go. Autumn's turn. That's our round one card gone. Uh, round three is resources. It's the fish icon. No rodent. Yeah, the rodent's gone. I'll take that from there. And activate pink powers. I don't have any. My turn now, so I'm going to play the Kingfisher in the blue area. Doesn't cost me any eggs. Put that over there. Place that down, blue and red. As a pink ability, so whenever a player plays a water nest bird, gain one fish from supply. That might help us later. I've got one action left on my turn, so here's go now. So, no cubes on there, but he gets three eggs. So he's on, he's got ten eggs so far. A mask go, I'm going to go for the eggs. So we're going to put that there. We're going to lay three eggs down on the Kingfisher with the star icon. And that's my last turn. I've got a card in my hand, so I can't do that. That's my last turn over. His card, uh, round three, put a cube on there and gain two eggs. So, end of the round. So, total eggs in that nest. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He has five, six. Yay, I won a round. I won. I got first place and he's over there. Excellent. Okay, so we get more points in later rounds, so hopefully we can win this game at the end. Shuffle up his cards. Round four now. Shuffle up. And discard all these, unfortunately. And get some more. There we go and flip his card over you get a lot of cards in this game a lot of cards and birds that's the base game as well so total birds in that area is going to have seven oh, it's going to have three birds in that nest so i need to get at least three to beat his score so my goal now is to get birds in this area so there's two birds there that have the uh that symbol so we're going to go for that we're going to place this here to draw cards now not only can i draw a card but i can pay an egg to draw an extra card so I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay an egg. I'm going to draw this and this to place in this area here. And replace that. 
He's got plenty of eggs out. Got some good scoring birds. We should be okay to win this game. Uh, Autumn is turned now, so top card. No cubes on there, but he gets three eggs. He's got a lot of eggs. That's why I use dice, because the eggs just get everywhere. Uh, my go, I can't really play any of the birds just yet. So I'm going to gain some resources to hopefully play them. So what do I need? Just wheat. So I've got wheat tokens. I'll take the wheat. There we go. I get the wheat tokens. They're mine. Autumn's turn. Round four. Cube on there. And discard all these three again. Replace with three more. This game as well, it's also really relaxing to play. It's really mellow and chilled out. In its capacity, it doesn't feel like tense. It just feels nice and just, you know, because of, I don't know if it's just the pretty colours or the birds. It just has a really relaxing feel on the player. It should feel chilled out. Uh, my go now, so to play my cards, I do need some green resources, hopefully. I can play, no, I can't, I need, I need green. So we're going to go for the resources again. Got that ability, my bad. Let's do that ability before I forget. Nope, didn't work anyway. Discard it. Um, I'm going to go for the resources again. So we have to shuffle these. So I shuffle, re-roll. Just need a couple of green ones. That should be okay. Yep, there's two green there. That'll do me. There we go. Autumn's turn. Round three, that's gone. He gains four eggs. Oof, that's tough. And a cube on there. Oh, it's going to be hard. This is. It's going to be really hard. Okay, my go. So, play one of the birds. I'm going to play the the Ashroti Flycatcher. So, put that there. I tell you, I need one egg at least to play for it as well. Two greens and a cherry token. Play that there. When played, lay one egg on each of your birds with that nest symbol so that is that that and these two okay autumn's turn round four remove from the feeder uh, it is the rat first sorry activate all pink powers so if i gain a fish from supply and there is none never mind okay my go so I need green to play for the blue gross beak. There's nothing in there I can really use. Uh, I need rodent, I haven't got that, unfortunately. So I've got one action left. So I might as well use that left action to just get some eggs, extra points. So one on there, one there, and one there. So, Took a bit from your hand being that in this card. I'm gonna do that. And also lay a bit egg on this bird. There we go. And his last action now is that's round two, that's gone. Round four is birds that eat fish. That counts. Keeps that one. There we go. And that is the end of the round. A bit short this time round. Okay, let's look at the points. So Total birds in there, I had three, he has three, four, five. He definitely won this round. Let's count up the end of score game. Let's have a look at the points. So I'll get points for each bird. So that's two, five, nine, uh, 14, 16, 20, 24. I'll also get uh, points listed in each completed bonus card. So 24, and also what else have we got here? So birds that eat at any symbol. I've got one, only one, that's nothing. Birds that eat the wheat symbol, so that's one, two, three, four, four, nothing unfortunately. Birds have at least one egg laid on them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's actually three points, that's 27 points. Um, I also get points and around goals, so 27, uh, 29, 32, uh, 38, 42, uh, also I get one point per egg, food and token, so that's 42, so that's 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, I get 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 68, 
69, uh, 70 points. So I've got uh, my point, my score is 70. And uh, let's check out Autumn's score. So, points for then around goals. So he has two, uh, seven, 10, 17. Points on his face up bird cards, so 17. Uh, 22, uh, 31, 37, and 45. So 45. Um, and he also gets points based on the what difficulty you choose. So if you have easy, medium, or hard, you get three points per card, four points per card, or five. We'll do three points per card. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times three is 18. Plus one point for each egg collected, and that's 18 again, so that's 36. 18, that's 81 points. Oh, he won. He won pretty well there. And that's it for this uh, solo playthrough. It's quite fun, it's uh, competitive, so that's on easy mode too. Um, I could have got some more birds out. I think with him discarding cards to the bird feeder, it really does throw your game off a little bit. It makes it quite hard and quite challenging. But the auto system in this game is really fun and I really like how they've done it. It makes it more challenging, competitive, and just playing solo is in equal parts fun and entertaining. And that's it for this playthrough. If you have any questions about this game, anything about the rules or any tips or any recommendations, let me know below. I look forward to a Lost Ruins of Arnak playthrough, hopefully tomorrow or Sunday. And that's it for this video. Like and subscribe, appreciate that, and thanks for watching.